McKenna, are you ready? Okay. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is a meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board of the Village of Tequesta, August 17th. We're calling the meeting at 5.30 p.m. McKenna, may I have a roll call, please, of those in attendance? Here. Steve Higgins. Elizabeth Shower. Here. Leslie Depp. Here. Here. Thank you. Our next item is the approval of tonight's agenda. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. A second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, next item is our approval of the previous meeting minutes of July 20th, 2023. Did you all have a chance to review them? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Our agenda items this evening is SPM 5-23, an application from Tequesta Mall, LLC, for a site plan modification to change the exterior building colors to Sherman Williams SW6385 and Sherman Williams SW7030, a new gray. The application also includes the imp improvement of the existing covered walkway and the replacement of the walkway's roof material with seam metal roof, Metal Alliance Dark Brown. The property uh, is located at 150 U.S. Highway 1 in Tequesta. Uh, before would we like begin, the floor? I would. Um, the three items on our agenda this evening are uh, quasi-judicial in nature. That being said, if there's anyone present here who will be giving testimony regarding any of these applications, I need to swear you in at this time. If you could please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you very much. You may be seated. At this point in time, I would also like to ask the board to disclose any ex parte communications they may have had with the applicant with regards to our first item, SPM 5-23. No. No, sir. No. no. Okay, very good. You may proceed. Thank you. Lance, you want to take the floor? Okay. <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Good evening, Lance. The application that we have in front of us is from Tequesta Mall LLC, which is the fashion mall. Um, we actually have Mr. Jim Sturgis here to present the application. Go ahead, Mr. Sturgis. Go ahead. Okay. Sir, if you could state your name and affiliation for the record, please. Yes. My name is James Sturgis with Architect Sturgis and Associates, uh, representative for uh, Tequesta LLC. And uh, understanding that the submittal is for a minor site plan review, the actual uh, scope of the project or intent of the project is to obtain approval for a update of the color scheme uh, for, the, for the fashion mall. Uh, the building was built originally in 1979 and has been uh, basically painted over since then in kind of the same colors that it started with. And so um, the current owner purchased the property uh, in 2018 and they've been looking at trying to do um, an upgrade uh, on the exterior color since then. Uh, they ran into some issues as they started looking at replacing the, the roof, and that was that the existing walkway, which is a covered walkway um, that wraps around the whole building, and um, that walkway um, has, has been uh, not properly maintained over the years and so has uh, deteriorated. Um, and you can see uh, on the bottom image in the red, uh, everything that is a covered walkway. The main buildings are a CBS concrete block and stucco building, and the um, uh, covered walkways are a pitched roof uh, that's basically a wood construction, and that's the component that hasn't been maintained. And at this point, uh, the amount of repair that it would take to prep the existing wood or repair the existing wood um, is there's no no advantage to doing that versus just coming in and replacing the whole structure so the intent is to uh, just basically take down what's there and rebuild it um, and in the process 
doing away with the flat tile roof, uh, which is painted, at least painted in some places, um, and, uh, and replace that with a dark standing seam metal roof, which the one color that we are uh, working off from is the original uh, storefront glass uh, frames are a dark bronze. And so that became kind of a basis to um, kind of pick a roof color. So we went with a dark uh, bronze roof color and then to um, kind of create a secondary uh, color uh, in addition to the light uh, cream uh, field was this uh, medium gray color. And so um, you can see up at the, on the top image what the uh, color scheme looks like now with the kind of terracotta color, if you will, of the banding and the, uh, the uh, tile roof. Um, and then down below that is you can see the uh, dark metal seam roof, the gray banding color, and then the light cream, uh, uh, light beige or light uh, gray color for the field. Oh, you can also see at the bottom the images, the underside of the structure, how some of it's uh, very badly deteriorated. And like I said, that happens in places throughout. So it just became um, most apparent that the best thing to do is just take it down and replace it. And this just shows the other elevations existing on top and proposed underneath. I mean, they're very, very simple buildings, clean, uh, geometric rectangular shapes, and the, and the pitched roof just kind of uh, weaves them all together. So there's really no change in footprint, no change in uh, uh, covered area, uh, nothing's added for uh, uh, conditioned space as well. It's just a, basically a repaint. And with that, I'll take any questions. I'll open the floor to the board. Any questions? I, I think it'll be really nice when it's all done, Jim. Nice I job. Know. I like I like the the dark metal roof and stuff. It, it'll look nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That looks very nice. Yeah. Leslie, mm -hmm. same same comment. Yeah. Anybody? Great improvement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll open the floor right now to the public. Any comments? We'll close public comment. I would like to make a motion. Hold on one second, if you don't mind, sorry. Um, we do have an actual condition of approval with this application on page four of our staff report. Um, staff is recommending the proposed um, condition of approval, which is the applicant shall receive a special exception use approval by the village council prior to the um, final approval of the, special, of the site plan modification. So based on the mixed use zoning district, the Flasher Mall, which is obviously a shopping center, is a special exception. So they'd have to get special exception use approval prior to them yes. actually getting the. So any any motion that you make, just please include that recommendation of the special condition. Exception. Special exception. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll make a motion to approve with the special exception use um, in the mixed use and use zoning district. Um, and that it will be required to be approved by the Village Council. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion Thank carries. Thank you, you very sir. much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Our next item is SPM 6-23. Application from First Southern Baptist Church for a site plan modification to allow for a preschool, including interior renovations, alterations to the existing driveway, creating new outdoor courtyard and playground areas, and revision to the landscaping. The application includes modifications to the building's aesthetics by enclosing the portico share and painting it with the existing building color. The subject property is located at 423 to Cuesta Drive. At this, at this time, Madam Chair, I once again would ask members of the board to disclose any ex parte communications they may have had with the applicant for SPM 6 23. I was at the property. Okay. I have none. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. So the application we have in front of us is the application from Tequesta First Baptist Church um, to do site plan modifications at the church. 
Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. So in April 2023, the village received a special exception use and site plan modification from the church to modify the existing use to include the educational component. Um, at the July 13th, 2023 village council meeting, the special exception use was approved for a preschool to operate with a religious, um, within a religious facility in the R1 zoning district. Um, through that process for the special exception use, there actually was two conditions of approval, which if you guys happen to make any type of approvals then or recommendations, please include these on your um, recommendation, which is number one, the applicant shall submit all certifications from the Florida Department of Health and Human Services prior to a building permit being issued. And, and Mr. Steve Knight is here um, to answer any questions and also do a presentation. But number two is in event that the applicant decides to implement a drop off or pick up line, the applicant shall apply for a special exception use modification to revise this matter and receive approval from the village council. And that is staff's recommendation, which ties in with the special exception use. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Knight with Alexis Knight Architects. I'm representing First Baptist Church of Tequesta. Uh, we've been working a long time with the group, and uh, we've got specific areas that we have targeted uh, for improvements. Those include both exterior around the adjacent building and the interior. Uh, there are some specific target areas. Uh, one of the things we're trying to accomplish is to enhance the building and bring uh, better use to the community for, uh, for education, specifically for, for the children. Uh, right now, those activities occur within the, ch within the uh, facility in the church, but uh, we would like to improve those. Uh, there are five specific target areas that we're looking at as far as improvements. Uh, there are two exterior uh, areas directly uh, adjacent to the front entrance where the pork cashier is located. Uh, we are going to reshape and modify the existing site to accommodate uh, a, a playground area for the children. Uh, then directly adjacent to that, there will be an outdoor courtyard, uh, which will be an assembly area or a gathering area for the adults and parishioners. Uh, they sit side by side. Uh, they will enhance the, the look and the aesthetics of the church uh, from Tequesta Drive. Um, then directly adjacent to that, there is an existing port cashier, uh, which is uh, actively used right now, which we are going to abandon as a port cashier, uh, reshape the drive, and close that in for additional uh, gathering and lobby space. Uh, it will work hand in hand with the new uh, courtyard that we've proposed uh, for the exterior. Uh, it'll be a transitional space where individuals will enter the, enter the church, gather interior and then exterior in that courtyard. Uh, then there are some selected interior renovations that are going to occur uh, within the facility itself. Uh, some of those are directly adjacent to the uh, Port Cashier. We're going to enhance and rework the lobby and then there will be minor changes to the, uh, the existing uh, assembly slash educational area to comply with the current uh, codes and requirements. Uh, for example, uh, there may be some additional restrooms added, but more importantly, uh, portions of the building will become uh, fully sprinkled in order to comply with the current code. Here's a blow up of how the driveway is going to be reworked. Uh, that is for the convenience of uh, use during Sunday sessions where adults will be dropped off uh, in front of the church. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation of how this may work from a traffic and stacking standpoint. Uh, just to be clear, uh, the uh, students will be, they will not be dropped off in the front of the church. Uh, they will be accompanied by their parents and escorted into the building and checked in. So that will alleviate the possibility of any uh, you know, congestion or, or stacking that may occur back onto Tequesta Drive. It, it kind of broadens the sweep of that drive, makes it much more convenient. And of course, with those changes, there'll be some uh, additional modifications to the landscaping and of course the drive. And pretty much the parking stays the way it is. Um, again, 
you know, highlighting the, the targeted areas that are going to be uh, combined within these two phases of work. And here's an elevation of what the enclosure of the pork cashier is going to look like. Um, it will be glass, it will be very open and inviting and add uh, ex extreme architectural entrance to the main entrance of the building. Uh, of course, in that area, the landscaping will be modified to accommodate uh, uh, the reshaping of the site. And there's a large view of what some of that landscaping is going to look like. Some of the details. And here are some 3D illustrations of uh, uh, looking at the uh, courtyard from the uh, pork cashier enclosure. We are going to uh, add some interest and some color with uh, umbrellas and structures as such to add a little more interest uh, from the street viewpoint. Uh, a little covered area that leads to the courtyard. And then here's a 3D illustration of what the uh, children's playground is going to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's secured, provides access as required to the building, access directly from uh, the building to the uh, enclosed secured playground area, a view from the street, there's the pork cashier uh, in its proposed state, enclosed, landscaped nicely with the uh, uh, courtyard flanking to the right. And in order to do this, and, and to do this, we hope to provide a, uh, a better uh, use to the community. And certainly it's something that uh, the Quest's Baptist Church has been very interested in doing for quite a while. And uh, we're prepared to move forward if we get the blessing from, from the village. Uh, with that, I open to any questions. Thank you. I'll start with the first question, if it's okay with my board. Um, let's go back to traffic pattern for a moment. Okay. On this plan that we received, you have the arrows coming this way. Yes. I know the property very well, because I'm a dog walker, and okay. I walk in that area a lot. Explain to me, for the people who live in the western side of the church, how are they going to access the church itself? Will you still have all the drive, the parking lots and the openings as they are now? Yes. Is that how that's going to work? Yes. Okay. Yes, all the other site access points are going to stay the way they are currently. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I have several. Go ahead. Sorry. No problem. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I am looking at, okay. Um, all right. Never mind. The parking spaces I found the answer to. I am looking at Alexis Knight's architect's memo dated June 30th, and I'm on page 7, where it was discussed um, by the village engineer as far as the drainage for the property. And um, it, you said to see the updated drainage statement attached, and I couldn't find any drainage statement attached. And this is for June 30th. I didn't see that. Well, we did <clears throat> issue one drainage statement, and uh, as requested by staff, uh, we made some modifications to that and issued a subsequent statement with the last deliverable. Um, so it's out there. Uh, I apologize okay. that it's not attached to the paperwork that you have, but we okay. do have one from a, a local right. civil engineer. I, I mean, I, I think everything that you were doing for, for the property is, is a definite enhancement, and it's so welcoming in, in the front where you put in the whole glass enclosure. But you said that you're going to move the sign and, and the flagpole. Now, are they going to go further? I mean... Where are you going to move them to? Because I couldn't. You said that the existing sign, and, and that's on her memo dated August 10th on page mm -hmm. 3. The existing sign, and it's on 3G, existing sign and flag bow will be relocated. If you look at the graphic ah, that's on okay. the screen right now. So it's okay. going to be to the right of the graphic. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's no okay. Worries. I need to highlight some of this stuff. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, but I really thank you for, you know, your time and your energy. I mean, it's, and I think it's, it's, it's a great enhancement. Um, my daughter is a nursery school teacher, 
and she likes the idea that the parents are walking in and not a drop off. So, and I'm a grandmother where I have to pick the kids up and then I'd have to get out and show them my driver's license to prove that I'm grandma, even though the kids are calling me grandma. So I think it's really nice that you're doing that. It's <laughs> Thank you. Both for the safety and security. Well, you have to yes, today, and really it's a do. very sad world. Yes. So, but so, thank you very much. Just to clarify, so as part of your package with the um, staff report, we included the development review committee's letters. Yes. Um, part of that, it mentions that the applicants are sponsors. The engineer provided an updated letter stating that there would be a slight increase in um, pervious area, and yeah. at the end of the day, what the our Civil engineer pretty much stated was um, village response, which is no additional comments at this time. So, okay. All right. And also the statements here. Oh, that one. Okay. Um, you know, we really, I need to okay. keep the clip everything together as I'm reading it. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Are you done? Yes, okay. thank you. Anybody else with questions? Uh, no, no, no. I have one question. Sure. Um, you have the floor. How many students and in, in what age levels? I wasn't able to identify. Okay, 75? 70, 75. 75. Ages 2 to 5. Okay. So are there 75 parking spaces typically available during, you know, the hours of drop-off and pick-up? Um, yeah, there's, there's adequate parking. Um, and it, it comes, uh, it's, it's not long-term parking, it's sure. dropping off and then leaving. Uh, I, I'm very experienced with daycare drop-off and pick-up. Okay. I'm just curious if how many parking spaces are typically available at typical drop-off hours and pick-up hours. Yeah, I think there's a, a total of 100 and 52 but I don't, do you run church programs at the same time? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the, yeah. the usage of the parking lot at those times. Yeah, we're not losing any parking. Um, there's uh, really no net loss or gain of parking. The only thing that we've done is rework the drive. So we've only studied traffic. We haven't studied the parking lots, open spaces during drop-off and pick-up? I'm familiar with the yeah. property. There's, there's, there's plenty. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. So, yeah. so, so north end, or I should say east and west of the building itself, yeah. they have parking on both yeah. sides. The larger yeah. lot is on the east side, and it's, I don't want to say combined, but there's a little strip plaza just east of that, and they're all, it's all one. So, you know, <coughs> parents are like, uh, you know, it's like Lord of the Flies out there for parking spaces when you drop off and pick up kids. I just want to understand. If they're typically enough and adequate, yes. that's yeah. so yes. sounds like we're confident. Okay. Yeah. On on the staff report, page five, it mentions well, parking. I had a church parking lot where it was not adequate parking. Yeah. So on the staff report, page five, it mentions parking and it says the uh, subject site includes 156 parking spaces, which include 148 regular and 888. Um, the proposed preschool will include 10 to 12 staff members Monday through Friday when the church is not conducting service. And also on the staff report, we have. A diagram provided by the applicant which mentions that there's going to be a specific time frame for drop-offs yeah. which will be about three o'clock mm -hmm. um, and then it also contemplates the number of students which would be the 75 and the number of staffers so if you need at most 90 parking spaces at drop-off and pickup I'm just asking you're not running prayer group Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock no, that's the question so. okay John Parisi from the Quest of First Baptist Church. We don't have any church programs going on. Thank you. Time. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I just, as a parent who has struggled immensely for parking and who lives and deals with Good Shepherd and the Recreation Center, I just wanted to ask the questions so we're clear. Thank you. I don't blame you. I'm the grandmother that sits there and goes, okay. Thank you. How do we do this? I'm now? super excited there's going to be daycare, so don't get me wrong. There should be more available daycare spaces. Thanks for your question. All right. Um, I, at this point, we'll open the floor to public comment. Anybody? And we will close the floor to public comment. Board, how do you want to proceed? I will make a motion to recommend for approval for the special exception um, and for item number one, that they meet the Florida Department of Health Code and the uh, application that they, the applicant will come back if they decide to change for a drop off and pick up line. Great. Second. Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you for your time.
Okay, our next item is SPR 1-23, application from 250 Beach Road for a site plan review to build a 10-story, 34-unit multifamily, 289,237 square feet condominium building, including one monument sign, two swimming pools, and a landscaping plan. The subject property is located at 250 Beach Road in Tequesta. Madam Chair, once again, I would ask at this time for any members of the board who have had any ex parte communications with applicant to disclose those at this time. No. 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 Thank you. Lance, I'll give you the floor. All right. So on September 29, 2022, there was a conceptual presentation that was provided to the Village Council for the subject application. And then in May of 2022, the Village Tequesta began the participation process, a public participation process, which was design guidelines, which you guys are all aware of. Um, on January 12, 2023, the Village adopted said design guidelines. Um, however, the Village ordinance or the Village code was contemplated for new developments that were essentially after the ordinance was adopted. So. With this application that was submitted, it was essentially provided before the code was adopted. So they actually did this predating the code. However, the applicant did actually include the design guidelines as part of the package. Um, you guys are here, obviously, as a recommending body, as mentioned earlier. Um, and Mr. Gentile is here for a presentation on the site plan. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask the attorney, do we need to swear in for this project? Yeah, uh, uh, we have some of our consultants are here oh. and the client and I just thought maybe sure. you'd redo it because they missed it because of the rain. All right. Oh. Okay. I'll, I'll swear you in now. If you plan to give testimony. I, I swear it, but I'll do okay. it again. I'd like to swear. Regarding this application, please raise your right hand at this time. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Very good. Okay, for the record, uh, George Gentile, President and Senior Partner of 2GHO, Inc., Landscape Architects Planners, Inc. Um, uh, we're here representing the 250 Beach Road Project, Fountain Blue Development. Um, they're the developers of Sea Glass and also Atlantic Beach One, was, which you looked at as 300 Beach Road previously to this. Um, we're excited to bring this project to you. We did a pre-app with the Village Council on this so that uh, as we have committed in our office that we would do that with every project that uh, we bring to the Village, we do a pre-app with the Council prior so that we can get their comments. And um, we're here today because we've gone through that process. Uh, I'm going to go through my slides and then uh, I am going to have Michelle Citron from Architectonica Architects get up and talk about the architecture briefly. Um, I have my... my uh, business partner here, Emily O'Mahony, who is the site designer and landscape architect for the project. Uh, we have Mr. Richard Brewer here from um, Fountain Blue. Um, and uh, we have, I, I don't think, maybe I can in, take in the building official. He kind of looks at everything anyway as well. That's the material, materials board, which we'll go over in a minute. Thank you very much. So if I can get this to work. Oh, there we go. I went too fast. Uh, Fountain Blue Development, of course, um, uh, we're requesting approval of this 3.21 acre property located at 250 Beach Road. Um, it currently contains in the site that you'll see now the, uh, an existing building with 40 units. And as with the other projects that we've come in on, particularly the 300, we've reduced the density. So we're actually eliminating six units in this new development. Um, it is a 10-story building meeting your guidelines of height. Uh, in the in the village um, and this will be a 34 unit condominium um, uh, project uh, you know Fountain Blue development they're world renowned they've have a great reputation of doing great projects they've been in f southeast Florida for quite some time um, the residential philosophy focus on location innovative design um, forward thinking of course amenities lots of amenities we have two pools um, Again. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, we need to swim a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have state-of-the-art technologies going in this building as well. And, of course, the quality of their construction is great. Um, they're the developers, as I said, of Sea Glass and Atlantic Beach One. 
So location-wise, um, we are between the um, Ocean Towers and Atlantic Beach One, which is the, that's the new name of the 300 uh, uh, Beach Road project that you reviewed before. Uh, and you can see where the Island House is uh, to the north of that. Um, I'm gonna go to the next slide, hopefully. There we go. Um, and so across the street, we have the Island House Southwest, the Seamus Condos, and the Ocean Villas. And you'll see in my presentation earlier, there is an easement that goes between uh, the, the uh, Atlantic Beach One or 300 uh, Beach Road and the 250 Beach Road project that is for the, the residents in the condominium across the street on the intercoastal. And we are we're keeping that easement there and enhancing the walkability of that uh, for them as well in the project. And you'll, you'll see that um, in our presentation. This is what's there today. Um, it's a, um, uh, a it's an old building. It's uh, in its 50 years of being in existence, and um, uh, one of the reasons that a lot of the residents are looking to uh, work with people such as uh, Fountain Blue is that the the um, new provisions and requirements that they're looking at because of the Miami issue and the new regulations by the state on on uh, condominium. Um, inspections uh, it, it would be very expensive probably to retrofit and bring this project up to the ability for them to meet hurricane and flood conditions in fact um, one of the conditions you have what the condition you have here is for us to provide the Lomar letter from FEMA and we've already anticipated based on the Atlantic Beach one we've moved the building all the way to the front you're going to see that which uh, ensures that the projects on either side are not getting something in front of them blocking views but we are also meeting that new resiliency um, elevation that we have to do on the project so um, this is our site plan uh, you can see the uh, left side is um, Beach Road uh, the project engages Beach Road with an uh, with the um, entry feature and drop off there in the center there's a pedestrian connection to the uh, roadway uh, at Beach Road, and um, we are taking the DOT county maintained um, walkway and actually meandering it through that area with the with the landscape program that we have, which we've done on the other projects as well. Uh, you can see the amenity area on the other side. Uh, you can see the the, uh, the swimming pool, the large swimming pool. That's uh, the main amenity area. Um, and the deck area for the residents to use um, for seating and enjoying the sun. And there are some other um, amenities that we're putting into that project. The land use is medium density residential. The zoning is R3 multifamily. The total site area is 3.21 acres. We're allowed, uh, by that density, we're allowed a maximum of 12 units per acre. We're building at 10.6 units, which is less. And as I said earlier, we're taking 40 units down to 34, so we're, we're, we're minimizing the traffic impact to the roads by six units, um, and, um, and we think that's a benefit uh, to, the, to the project. We meet your height, um, our, we meet your uh, lot coverage, we're at 34.9%. We provided 49% of uh, open space with a 30% required by your code. Um, we're providing 73 parking spaces, and we're required by your code to have 68 on the site. Um, the parking in this project are mostly under the building, so they're not visible. Um, and again, the project highlights, as I stated, um, uh, we've worked the project to meet the requirements. Um, and um, the unit sizes will be about 4,399 square feet to 5,210 square feet, um, which are sizable units, uh, but are the market in this area is um, seeing that. Uh, if you remember on the Sea Glass project, we had a 9,000 square foot yeah. penthouse suite there that actually sold first almost. I yeah. think if Richard would, would probably agree with me. Um, we didn't buy it. Uh, uh, but, oh, you know, see, we were, George? You know, okay. <laughs> Mr. <Missed your> opportunity. <laughs> um, and then again, you know, this uh, provides for uh, what the market is looking for is expansive glass and large balconies so that they can enjoy the outdoor uh, views of the, the waterway and the intercoastal waterway as well. Um, 
We designed to meet the Village of DeQuesta's code provisions. Um, you're, I'm not going to go through everything we just we did. We meet all of your code requirements. We're not asking for any waivers, variances, or anything for this project. Um, um, we've we've tried very very hard to make sure that we did not do that. Um, and we've also worked very hard to, as Lance indicated, to work with your new guidelines. Even though we weren't required to, we knew that they were coming, and we have done the, uh, what we think is an admiral job of trying to do that with the architects and the engineers and, um, and our office as far as the landscape architecture goes. Um, again, these are your criteria in the new design guidelines. Um, we met 17 of 18 items in the building design, working with your staff, Nelson, Lance, and, and all your staff members here uh, have been great working with us on it, uh, including the height and massing architect, arch, arch, articulations, sorry, um, uh, building materials and colors, and you will you have those in front of you there. And I'm going to let uh, Michelle Citron, who's the architect on the project, um, work, uh, go through some of that. Uh, we tried uh, green building design. We have high technology going in this for the residents. Um, site planning, we met 18 of 19 items of your uh, guidelines. Um, building orientation, vehicular access and parking, refuge collection is actually totally hidden. It's inside the building. It's, it's going to be wheeled out like everyone else does in that area. You don't see a dumpster. You don't have a dumpster enclosure. It'll be brought out. Um, and then uh, signage and lighting and, of course, uh, compatibility and transition um, in the area to meet some of those. Site planning, 18 of 19 items. Uh, I won't go through everything. Uh, landscaping for five items uh, we were able to meet. And the public streetscape, as I indicated, we met all the requirements and the guidelines that you all are trying to do there, including meandering the pedestrian walkway to create a, a, a more desirable walking environment to that area connecting it to the building, uh, to the front entry, um, and doing the landscape amenities that we've done, um, and, and also as far as lighting and, uh, uh, and utilities in that area. And we are working with your engineering department again, as, as we've done before, on all the utility issues that, uh, that are required. I'm going to bring Michelle Citron up very quickly, who's with Architectonic. They are the architects. Um, and uh, let her just go through the architecture real quick. Quick, I'll get through and do a conclusion, and then we'll open it up for whatever you wish to. Thank you. Thank you, George. Hello. Hi, I'm Michelle Sintron for Architectonica. Thank you for your time um, and attention. Um, which one? Yeah, this, right, this, this, one. this era right here, and you got to really okay. push it that way. All right, okay. thank you. So, as you've seen, uh, some of the illustrations and the renderings. So, we're looking at um, the way that we like to talk about it is um, the building is, is um, articulated in layers. So we have, you'll see that the ground, it's kind of grounded and base. And so that's um, articulated in a textured stone. There's a variety of textured stones. And then the building elevates as, as it comes up with the units, with the residential units. Um, uh, so the, the lower level is the amenity, the entrance and the lower amenity, and the amenity, and that's textured. In, in stone, um, and that's where we have the base of the pool deck and concealing all the parking. Um, we have uh, then the building erects, and then so we have, um, we like to think about the building volume as, as divided into three different zones. The central zone, which is more t um, transparent and allowing that for that connection with the, with the coast or the water, uh, and then it kind of has a bookend, or at least these two ends of the of the building, which are articulated in in these uh, grid frames, which are uh, pretty much the the facade of, of what's behind, which are these uh, beautiful um, outdoor balconies, large outdoor balconies, like um, outdoor uh, living rooms. Um, the material and color palette relates to the coast, so it's very soft. Um, colors that are sand, limestone, uh, te tex and textures, and so I, I'd, I probably would rather go to the to the views, uh, which you you have in, in front of you. So here you see um, what I was uh, describing. So a, a grounded base uh, with a darker tone and textured stone, and then 
you know, it kind of separates and then the center, it, it kind of separates the two ends, um, articulating um, the, the facade or the volume is, uh, you know, recessed balconies and this depth. So really playing with the, with the different layers and allowing for some depth and shadow. Um, and then, you're right, so this is the looking east, looking west. Here you see the setback and the, and the dune um, landscape uh, at the ground and the setback. And here you see the, the, the pool deck and how it's still, you see how it's somewhat elevated. And so that's how we call it grounded. And so it's, it's in these layers that, that uh, grow vertically. Um, I can keep going and talk about the way that we're the grid and how we're we're reducing, you know, the the view of this of the layering with uh, the grid module. Um, but um, so that's how how you see the articulation. Uh, this is where you see the layering of the setback of the glass, allowing for these uh, deep uh, balconies and outdoor private spaces. Um, the bird's eye view. Here you see the concealing, we are concealing all the mechanical uh, um, equipment above with this uh, metal mesh. Again, in these tones that are um, uh, complementary to the adjacent, to the, our coast and, and, our, and, and the area, our tropical climate. Um, that's it. I think one of the other features that, uh, as Michelle was trying to go through it, is that the balconies are actually on an angle. So, mm -hmm. the, so the walls inside the grid are actually uh, angled as well, which also creates a, a variety of ins and outs on the building. It gives it, it, gives it diversity and, and, uh, and, and really articulates the, uh, the architecture. Um, very much in conclusion, uh, you know, we meet all the code requirements of the Village R3 Zoning District. Very important, we do not require any variances for this project. Um, um, uh, we are a permitted use in this district, um, and so we're meeting all those requirements. Uh, uh, incorporated the council's thoughts into the project when we had our pre-app back in um, uh, September of 2022. Um, uh, and uh, there's no impacts to the existing levels of service. In fact, as we said, we've reduced six units, so we've reduced the traffic impacts on the road. We're not increasing that. Um, and uh, we are compatible with the surrounding community. Uh, we're providing the, the uh, continued use of the 10-foot pedestrian access to the condominium building across the street. And we're actually um, uh, making a landscape corridor for that actually to happen. Um, and uh, and uh, we're very pleased to provide you with this project. We think it's gonna be a great asset to the village of Dequesta, and thank you, and we'll here to answer any questions you have. Thank you, George. Sure. I'll open the uh, floor to the board for questions. Liz, you want to go first? Yes, please. Um, George, okay, field observe, uh, observation report, okay. They found on photo 16 a flower the burrowing four o'clock on your property that is endangered in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. With everything going on, how are you going? Do you pick that flower up? And that, that, I believe, is in the dune area that will remain in that location. So it and if it's there. not remaining, then it'll be relocated to that dune okay. system. Yeah. Just like we did at St. Jude? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My <laughs> other question. I really like how you did, you put the, um, the patios at an angle. The other thing I have a question is, it's on your second level floor plan. You have a commercial kitchen, residential dining, a lounge, building, and I mean, so you could, you're gonna rent that out or you can no, have parties? No, this is a concierge condominium for these residents and they're getting all those amenities. It's all a part of the amenity package for this project. Oh, so they don't have to cook, huh? Aren't I'm hoping gonna... they're going to invite me over. I was just okay. going to say that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's pretty good. Um, okay. And then my last question, um, what I also liked, and I can't find it now because I can't refer to the page, but 
you know, I did read everything. The, um, your guidelines, you went step by step. That was really, I mean, I really appreciate you because I know that took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I really appreciate is that you don't even have, you're going to put a, a bench out in the front of the property with a light. And I mean, I think that alone is going to just enhance everything as, you know, yeah. as the flow goes down. Right. The, it's just, and I, I, I really take my hat goes off because I really appreciate the fact that you want the extra. Yeah, and, and again, as Lance indicated, we, we, we brought this project in before the guidelines were adopted, mm -hmm. but the developer uh, uh, had us do the, as much as we could with what we were dealing with on the original design that went to the town, the village council. Because if you looked in there, we went in September to the conceptual and then your guidelines were adopted, I yeah. think, around January, January <laughs> of the next year. And mm -hmm. so we were still working with staff. And, of course, staff was c encouraging us. They, they're they very good at what they do. Nilsa's <laughs> office encouraged us to, to work very hard to there. try to beat <laughs> that. <laughs> and, so, and so we did that. So um, And we did it the best we could. And if you can see, we only missed a few items and uh, because we already had the project designed and, um, and everything else. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Thanks, Liz. Anybody else? No. Alternate board members. Sure. Being away for the public. Just step up to the podium and just say your name. My name is Jean McEldowney, and I live across the street at Sea Mist, and I'm an alternate. Um, as I was driving out my driveway just now, it looked like a bolt of lightning hit the top of Regency. So I thought, well, we may not have to bring it down. I mean, it, <laughs> it hit the top. I actually backed up because I, I thought it was going to catch fire. But um, it is beautiful. I've had many calls, and mainly the calls were about the colors. Um, is there a color that is a metal color. I can't tell. I looked through everything. Um, Here. We really, yeah. This is the, um. It was kind of an orange. Yeah. Okay. So it, it must. This is mainly the wood that you want. Yeah, so that's from Sure, that, well, that's, that would be the, the underside. So mm -hmm. the, the, you were worried about the metal, so let's... Well, they're calling it a rusty color, the people that I've spoken with. So those um, are the trims. That's, that's the trims color. Trims are really... I, 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 was, I, would, I, would, I believe that maybe is this That must this be color? it. That's okay. it. Because this is right. for the metal screen, so for, oh. the, for the top. <sighs> that, but that's not rust. Uh, this is maybe rust. This is what... And so those are, the, that's the detail, that wall, for example, in, in the center. Yes, so it's that's... it's like an accent color. Um, the majority, of course, is going to be these tones. And then this is, I don't know if they call that, that's just for the frame of the mullions. I do, I think it was that, so, th that I, people yeah. are not happy with it. This plan did oh. go out this week, so, so a lot of people have it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, as you can see, the majority of it is the lighter color. And yeah. these are, so it allows us to provide a, a depth, a detail, at least this contrast. Because if everything was the same color, then, you know, and, and we, we chose to go with a warmer color to, you know, to, again, to maintain that, that coastal, tropical, and, and the soft, sand, airy, well, I'm glad you're speaking um, on this because they're probably all on Zoom right now. Oh. Um, a lot of people are gone, so they called from afar. But yeah. um, so, and then hopefully the, this, that's acceptable. This is the um, underside. Uh, of, you know, so again, it, it allows that depth. More um, of the warm tones absolutely. rather than yes. the you know Gray, sail black. blue. Exactly. And all the things it's, that they seem exactly. to like, right? So okay. it's, it's a warmer, it's more resort. That's how we envision it. Okay. I have another question. Um, 
sea glass is gated, right? I thought there was a gate, right? A, there, there is a gate there. There's a gate, I believe, at the perimeter fence on the sides, but it's And this will have front. nothing? No. Uh, the village okay. is, well, if we gate anything, it's at the garage. Okay. So it's not the project itself. Okay. Um, all right, so the gated area. I noticed that in a lot of my paperwork, they're calling the access um, on the north side as public access. Mm -hmm. I, it mm -hmm. really I is so. for only one building, yes. right. and it is deeded. Um, right. So I, I thought it's that gated. we were going it's to gated. call that it's seamless gated. access. It's gated. It's gated. And it's, gated. And it's, gated. And it's going to be gated, yes. right, yeah. with yeah. access. With but access but I see in a lot of the paperwork that they are saying public access, and we have a terrible time right now with access people park in our lot and Regency lot to get to the beach because there is an opening through there. Yeah, I think it should have a, a change terminology uh, depending on how you're going to work the access. Yes. Um, I, I know you said gated or... That access is it? gated for your... Right, and seat. there's no other opening to either side of that. There's, a, there's an overwalk the right. 300 is allowed to come into this project as well. Okay. But not your, your they come into this project, not the okay. easement. Okay. So is this Atlantic 1 and Atlantic 2? That's what it's probably going to be, but I haven't, I haven't, haven't found that out. You haven't decided that. Okay. I, I don't decide the names the client does, right. so right. I don't know what that's going to be at, right. exactly yet. So, okay. Okay. Very good. And okay. these are condominiums. Condominiums, 34. No home. other type of living. We're living there as condominiums. That's okay. What Thank you, thank you. They're thank you, Jim. We'd love to have you come and buy one. I don't know, but I can tell you right now, I won't I, be moving I there. I can't okay. afford it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Madam Chair, we will, uh, with staff, we will change that terminology. Uh, we, we just did it because it's not the residents, it's right. a public entity coming in, and that's right. why we did mm -hmm. that, so. Okay, okay. thank yeah, you. So. Any other questions? Okay, we'll open the floor right now to public comment. Hi, Marie. Hello, my name is Marie Sapiri. I'm a resident, I'm also an alternate. Um, the Beach Road Design Guidelines on page 38 specify, quote, waterfront properties shall provide a five foot landscape buffer at a minimum 40% of the property's total rear lot line. The five foot landscape buffer shall be taken from the back side of the bulkhead of all waterway properties from the back west side of the dune. One canopy tree or three palms shall be required for each 30 linear feet of per perimeter landscape strip. Trees and palms may be grouped, but the minimum number of trees required by this section <clears throat> must be met. In addition, one shrub at least 24 inches in height shall be required for each two linear feet." End quote. This text is also in sections 78-403 and 78404, which make the buffer and tree requirements mandatory. The five foot landscape buffer required by the code is not in the proposed design. There is a pool deck west of the bulkhead and three coconut palms in rounded planter boxes along the glass wall on top of the bulkhead. The box on the required tree data on page 145 says that 11 trees are required on the east buffer, but only four are provided. Furthermore, the coconut palms don't meet the definition of canopy tree unless all three of them are grouped together so that the group counts as the equivalent to a single canopy tree. The design does not meet the code for trees or the five foot landscape buffer. These requirements and guidelines are well founded and necessary for aesthetic and ecological reasons. The example of sea glass demonstrates that sunlight reflects with extreme intensity off of glass on the building uh, into the beach sand, causing excessive temperatures and glare on the beach. As a matter of common sense, this effect is not only a nuisance to beach goers and neighbors, <clears throat> but is also apt to harm animals and plants in the beach ecosystem. Additionally, the beach road design guidelines specify at page 26, quote, the building materials should include the following, be high quality and aesthetically pleasing and avoid the use of highly reflective materials. A metal grate around the roof is not aesthetically pleasing, 
Certainly it is not at all in harmony with the ideals of pristine natural Florida, which the Seaglass marketing team itself identified as the principal value in this location. Harmony with the surroundings is a requirement in section 22-82. The building also presents glass everywhere, and glass is a highly reflective surface. The reasons to avoid such large proportions of highly reflective materials are twofold. First, the aesthetics of the glass box is ostentatious and not in harmony with the character of the space or the village. Many residents of the village and other communities have made this point. Glass boxes are also garish, and garish building surfaces and styles are disallowed under code section 22-82. The second reason to avoid glass as a primary building material is that it reflects a lot of light in ways that pose safety and environmental hazards. For these reasons, the proposed design does not meet the requirements of the code, is inconsistent with the design guidelines, and violates the principles that direct both the code and the guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. George, you have the floor. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Um, as I indicated at the beginning of my presentation, and as Mr. Lilly did, um, respectfully, we did not have to meet the guidelines. They were not in place when we did the um, application, but we did meet almost 98% of them. Um, and we think that the mesh that is around the top uh, is almost like a screening. It's not really going to be a reflective surface. Mm -hmm. The glass is um, set inside the grid and in the balcony and on an angle. Um, the glazing is no different than any other buildings in the area. Um, and um, uh, we would respectfully uh, uh, disagree that we did our best to meet those guidelines with the project. And, uh, but we appreciate the comments. We understand that the, that the village is uh, looking for those. So. Just one, one thing to add. Yeah. Emily O'Mahony, for the record. Um, the, there was a combination of doing more on the sides on some of the buffering because of the rear yard um, situation for the buffer. Um, so the, we, we did compensate and do more on the sides oh, to account for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then if you, if you noticed in, oops, uh, in the pool deck area, um, this is a, I think when, when you look at your design guidelines, when you're working in the beach environment, uh, the canopy, um, the time, yeah, there we go. The canopy uh, issue is going to be somewhat of a problematic issue with the salt spray, the wind uh, issues that we have there. We worked pretty close with uh, Steve Parker and made sure that, uh, that, that he was uh, comfortable with the landscape plan. And we do have quite a few um, palms, which um, at some point our client uh, was a little concerned about us blocking the views to the ocean, which these uh, residents, the current residents and these residents are, are buying to, to look at. But uh, I was just going to go try to get back to the plan. But anyway, uh, we have done, I think, a, an exceptional job on the landscape on that pool deck. Um, and I think it's going to be a, an asset to the, to the residents there as well. So, um, but I'd be glad. And you can see the, the, the tree materials. The light greens are the coconut palms. Um, uh, I do want to mention, too, that um, my client, remember, we have an environmental company that's working with us on this. Uh, that specific plant is actually going to be moved to a specific nursery that deals with native plants oh, and then good. it will be brought back and put into the site here okay. i have all the faith in the world with you george i, but I, know, I know what I, we go through I, with but, endangered but i just want to make sure you got uh, and our <laughs> client wanted to make sure you had that description they've already uh, worked with the environmental group the it coastal, wasn't any coastal. gopher tortoises it was yes. a plant now. Very good. yes <laughs> thank you Oh yes, it has to be. Oh yeah, yes, it's that's correct. It has to meet it has to meet the turtle protection ordinance of the village of DeQuesta mm -hmm. as well as the county, county. Uh, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. So I I guess I didn't have the concerns with the glass that were raised because of the setback and, and the yeah. tenon. Uh, but when you showed the one picture of the sort of it's like a railing on the front right of the balcony. What is that material? Is I would assume that's similarly treated so that that does not have the glare like the 
the like mid height level that, surface. You're talking about on the on the balconies. On the balcony. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Okay. It's not the same glass that's going to be for the enclosure, but it will be. Yes. Yeah. So it's not going to have the reflective heat no. issues that were raised. Okay. No. Thank you. Any other questions, board? We'll open it to public comment. Do we have any public comment? We'll close. Yep. Yeah, thank you. All right, board. How do you want to proceed? I'd like to interrupt one more time. Sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> um, as you saw with all the other applications today, they all have conditions of approval. Yeah. Um, if possible, if you can include any conditional, so the conditional approval that we have on here, which is the applicant shall provide the village with a letter of map revision um, issued by FEMA prior to the issuance of building permit, then that would be great. A FEMA permit? A LOMAR letter. Yes, and we, have, and we agree with that condition, as we did on the other project. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. I make a motion to recommend approval of SPR 1-23 with the addition of the LOMAR letter. Is that, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll second that. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you Thank so you. much. Motion we appreciate passes. it. We'll get to council and hopefully get this built soon. Thank you. Okay, our next item is staff comments. I'd like to bring Nilsa Zacharias to the podium. Good evening, board members. I'm here today to, to say thank you so much to each of you. Everyone here does a fantastic job being part of this board. I mean, the dedication, the amount of work that you put together to be sitting in, in here and contributing to the quality of life of the village, I truly, truly appreciate. This was a large agenda. I know this weekend, what were you doing? <laughs> what each of you were doing? You were reading, you were getting ready for this meeting. And for all these years, Lance and I had the privilege to work with you as a team, because that's the only way to accomplish things, to work as a team. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, as you guys know, um, I started here right out of college, so yeah. I'm, I'm actually glad that I've been able to work with all of you in some way or form. Obviously, some longer than others, um, but it has been a pleasure. I'm not going to get as sentimental as Nilsa, but um, I just want to say thank you all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Lance. Public comments, we'll open it for the public. Maria Sapiri, um, as a point of administration, I think it would be good if we have make the PDFs word searchable in their entirety. The, for example, the Beach Road application, which was very lengthy, um, was mostly not word searchable. Um, I can't hear you. So it's I would like for the PDFs to be word searchable so that if you're looking for something like parking, for example, you can in your browser type in parking oh, wow. and find I'm it. <laughs> right? um, so because, and I think that could be accomplished by asking the applicants to make sure that when they submit them to us that they're, they've run them through at least an OCR program. Um, in the context of the discussion on fake grass, I would like to point out, the, to, point out to the board section 22-84, landscaping, subsection 6. Quote, Florida-friendly landscaping. All landscaping shall comply with the Florida-friendly requirements set forth in Chapter 78, Article 9, Division 4. End quote. Pertinent to the last meeting's discussion, this subsection is mandatory. Landscapes must be Florida-friendly, and our code specifically references the Florida-friendly landscaping program in defining Florida-friendly. As was acknowledged at the last council meeting, fake grass was explicitly identified by the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program as not a Florida Friendly product. That means that even a small amount of fake grass does not meet to Code. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Board comments? 
I would like to make a comment. I started with this board almost a decade ago. Nilsa and Lance have been stellar to work with, and I thank both of you. For, you have taught me. You've educated me. I so appreciate both of you, and you will be missed. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Anything else? I, I, don't, I don't know how to quest it will continue to survive without them. <laughs> they it's, will. It's transition time. It's transition. Yeah. It's transition time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll Change just say I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> but the one Change thing, is the one thing I, I'm, the old, I was, well, I am probably the old, no, I'm not, I don't know how old you are. But I'm the longest sitting person up here. And I've, de You've and had I've every dealt, position here. I know. And I've dealt with a lot of the people for P and Z. And um, I, I can honestly say that I have had such an excellent rapport with Nielsa and with Lance, and um, you listen. You listen to Absolutely. us, and um, you act upon what we suggest. And, you know, sometimes I used to think I was talking to the wall, but it's, I know being a former council member, it, Working for the government, it takes time. So, but I do have to say it's been a real pleasure, and I appreciate everything. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I would just like to say I'm the new kid on the block, and this is my Bible. Oh yeah. I love this. Thank you. It's not even. I don't even think of it. Maybe a year. Um, you guys are just unbelievable, and I <coughs> wish it could not be this way. <laughs> My first encounter. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. My first encounter with planning and zoning is when I was the president of Sequesta Garden, and we painted without getting permission and changed the color. <laughs> I remember that. Remember, and I and I went to Niels and I said, "How do I do the mea culpa, mea culpa? We did it wrong. We have to fix it." And she said, if you can pull this off by 3 o'clock, I'll get you on the next agenda. And I did. I ran to my office. She gave me everything I had to do. I did it. I brought it back. And we fixed it. And we said, we're sorry. And then we continued to paint that. our buildings. And so I met her then uh, as a new uh, resident all those years ago. And, and then became a member of this uh, board and knew that, I, that these guys were wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful to absolutely. everyone, not only us, but the public who doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> so thank you. Anybody else? Okay, may we have a motion to adjourn, please? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion passed.